My name is Jason Coleman. As a local LGBT specialist here in San Diego, I'd like to introduce you to one of the most diverse and inclusive neighborhoods in San Diego Metro, really, named Hillcrest and also the community of Bankers Hill. I'd like to present you with a couple of quick facts that I've learned from a Newsweek article, from some Zillow studies, and also from referring to the human rights campaign, diversity and inclusion in housing. So I'm happy to show you the neighborhoods today, focus on small businesses, and how we've kept our communities inclusive and diverse, and how that could benefit homeowners, home sellers, renters, and our local community. So thank you for joining me today. Let's get going. This space here is a considered a mixed-use development. So for it to be a mixed-use development, it has to have a certain type of permit and a certain type of license. Uh, this is more of a historic version. It's considered a mission-style building. So you'll see that on the bottom here, you have the businesses, but then on the top, there are apartments. So that helps with keeping gentrification um, becoming prevalent in a neighborhood because we still have rentals that are available for small businesses and rentals that are available that are affordable. Uh, when you move into some of the brand new condos that are going to be down here and a little bit more in the in the rest of Bakers Hill, that's when the prices tend to rise. So with the Zillow study that was produced about LGBT neighborhoods and inclusive neighborhoods and why they're 30% higher for buying and selling, it, it includes data but it doesn't necessarily include how we can support that type of data and then also not push out other people which is what gentrification is. So that's a very important principle when we're looking at buying and selling and you're looking at working with a realtor who knows the neighborhood, they need to know about products for different types of buyers, different types of sellers, and different types of investors. Revision is a creative workspace and our mission is to provide inclusive access to arts, education, about the environment, and um, culture as well. And you work with some... Um... We work with adults with developmental disabilities and um, just kind of provide them with a place to practice art alongside people who do not have disabilities. Um, kind of bridges the gap between putting people in different margins. By doing what you do with your small business is the perfect example of how it also affects housing and rentals. So, yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. So now what we're getting into is one of my second principles, which is how do we include everyone in our society as a whole and not force out certain members of our community. So this complex here is called Atlas. It's one of the most recent builds in the community of Hillcrest and North Makers Hill. So Hillcrest itself hadn't had anything of this nature built in probably the last 10 to 15 years before this developer came along. But when this developer came along, he worked through uh, some, some incentives that the state of California, the city of San Diego, and then our local homeowners associations had kind of put in place over the last 10 years, which was for a developer to get tax credits, they need to include affordable housing. So for them to include affordable housing, what does that really look like? Well, we have Affordable Housing Commission here in San Diego, um, and actually what they do is they hold a certain number of units in each one of these newly developed communities that are affordable housing for purchase. So through a city grant, through a state grant, through a state program, you are able as a home buyer to stay within your price range, stay within your income and your salary, and not spend too much and have to bid against all of these other people. So this is one of the products that I like to have knowledge of for those that think they might not ever be able to afford in this part of San Diego. You have these beautiful homes that were built in the early 1900s, some dating back from the 1800s that are historic. So we have uh, city policies to support those homes so they don't get torn down. Uh, we have city policies, state policies, government policies that uh, really affect the amount of new builds and how much more parking they can bring into a neighborhood. And it's really important for a real estate agent and someone who's looking to represent buyers or sellers or investors or uh, small businesses in renting a space, buying a space, to have a clear knowledge of that so that your property doesn't end up looking like this as a lease. We have 
have a density issue here in certain neighborhoods in San Diego. So we don't allow things that are 30 stories high to be built in a smaller community. But here's a perfect example of how as a developer, how as a small business owner, you can include a smaller space and create something that the community needs. So this is a boutique hotel and without a certain amount of over two or three hundred rooms or so, don't quote me on that, you can still market to Airbnb and VRBO because you're following guidelines for housing. So I wanted to point out this space because it's a new space in the Hillcrest community, which is something that we've needed for a very long time to increase um, traffic and travel in our neighborhood. We manage the hotel and then I, my wife and I own the shop and I kind of do all the vinyl and help with the woodwork and do all the woodwork, but she does all the curating of a lot of the other jewelry. And yeah, it's things. beautiful. Well, we do have our own website, which you'll see there. And yeah. We do ExpediaBooking.com. It's important for small businesses to have a variety of ways to promote themselves because larger businesses can come in and just kind of squash them with rates. But in the Hillcrest community and in the North Bankers Hill community, one of the things that they focus on is not letting anything get so large that it squashes out the small businesses. So here you have like this beautiful boutique hotel that has the, the owner of the shop as their main receptionist and he's also working the booking. So it keeps a constant flow of income for him and his family while they get to do what they love and include private personal gifts that he and his wife are making for tourists and other people in our neighborhood. In order to raise our community, we have to support the community. So it's the big circle of life here. There was a lot of older people that lived in the neighborhood back in the day, a long time ago, and then a new younger crowd has moved in, creating this kind of connected sense of community better, I believe. And the interesting thing about what he said about that was as the older, as the age of the community continued to grow, that there was a new, new group of community members that were com going to come in. But one of the cool things about the Hillcrest, North Bankers Hill, and even on over to North Park, which is another community near us, they have created senior housing and senior housing for sale for 55 and older um, only purchases and those prices of those homes tend to be lower because the market is for 55 and and older only to buy those houses but the local government the state government also has included towers for um, our older as our generations get older so that they don't have to leave the community and again that stops gentrification so now we've crossed over from the North Bankers Hill section into like the true version of Hillcrest. So we are on the corner of 5th and Robinson and I'm going to highlight some of the local businesses that are here. Restaurants, craft stores, and how they're adapting to new city ordinances and new state ordinances surrounded by the COVID-19. Now this affects buyers and sellers because anytime a business goes out of a community, it creates a hole in the market. So we want to talk about how these businesses have succeeded and excelled and if you can see there's sidewalk cafes where there were no sidewalk cafes allowed before COVID and there's new pop-ups along the street to allow for outdoor dining so here we go how are you guys so basically we're showing you diversity in restaurants and inclusion in restaurants we've gone from a craft ramen restaurant to Mexican restaurants. Uh, now we're going over to a fa place and we're moving into where the bookstores and some of the other uh, local businesses are. So you can see here that this is Luigi Vera. It's a local um, uh, re reusable clothing type facility. So think of like Buffalo Exchange. It's high end, they have Prada, they have Gucci, but it's uh, repurposed so it's stuff that you can bring in and change out for other credits in the store you can see they're kind of featuring like the 70s and 80s disco vibe right now but you can also see an example of the way that the restaurants and the shops have changed due to COVID so they're able to push their businesses out onto the street and it's it's supporting and saving the small businesses from losing revenue which also is supporting the community and housing in general because it's providing places for people to live places for people to continue to eat but also safe space for people to be in. So that's why I wanted to highlight this street. 
I want to really focus on this new restaurant in town. This restaurant's called Breakfast Bitch, and it has hit huge during the COVID scare because not only are they observing the safety requirements by the state, the city, and the local governments, but they're a black-owned business. And this has predominantly been an LGBT neighborhood. So we're bringing diversity and inclusion in by supporting these businesses. And look at the way outside. Everybody's social distancing. Everybody has masks. So it provides us with safety in our neighborhood, and it also provides us uh, uh, provides us with inclusion. In May of 2019, there was a population of LGBTQ communities and why they can be a hot spot for gentrification. And San Diego was actually named as one of the biggest hot spots for gentrification and I just wanted to explain to everybody from a housing point of view, from a real estate point of view, from a buyer's and a seller's point of view, how, because I've been in the market for 15 years here, how we're uh, working towards not having gentrification in our neighborhood. So this article in itself highlights all the major neighborhoods showing that in North Bankers Hill there has been a 10% increase in prices and that is the number one largest increase in pricing for LGBT uh, communities in the whole country. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed our tour of the Hillcrest and North Bankers Hill community today where we focused on diversity and inclusion and how it can benefit uh, future home buyers or current home sellers, uh, how it can benefit a neighborhood and community business, um, and how diversity and inclusion can take us all up together. So if you really enjoyed the segment today, I hope you'll follow me on my Facebook page uh, and you'll also follow me on my YouTube channel. I like to give tons of tips about how to write an award-winning uh, offer for a buyer or how a seller can increase their marketability to uh, a neighborhood or a specific crowd that they're working for. So I hope you guys enjoyed it today and looking forward to seeing you again soon and follow me here.